Hey folks, it's Andrew. Welcome back. Before I begin, I just want to say thank you to all the people who have subscribed to the channel. I have over 500 people and it is just, I'm just astounded at the amount of support from folks who want to learn I am, other I am practitioners. Thank you for the support. It just makes me excited that I am helping people learn identity for the most part, even some job tips. So thank you again for taking the time to really subscribe and really hope we can continue on to get some more viewership, get more people into identity and we'll go from there. So thank you. All right. So let's talk about today's topic. I want to talk about certifications. Some people call it attestations. What really certifications is, is just a way for us to validate someone's access. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to have a quick little slide deck to talk more about because I feel like it's easier to understand versus just me talking for the most part. Let's talk about certifications. So it comes to certifications, really what is certifications? Like I said earlier, we are taking the time to really validate someone's access. This can be done on a yearly basis. It can be done on a quarterly basis bi-weekly, twice a year. It really depends on your organization. But the biggest part of this is, should my people still have access to certain applications or places in their network? And if they don't, should I remove access or will I remove access? And that's really what certifications is. It's just for us to really validate leads privilege and to understand what does my people have? Should they still have it? And if they don't, let's say, report to me anymore, but they are still showing up on me, hey, let's make things better and change that. Or, hey, this person has moved on, as in they got promoted, maybe they don't need that anymore. Let's make sure we remove that. Because least privilege, again, just for a reminder for everybody, is for us to give access to people to do their job, and that's it, nothing more, nothing less. That's really what certification is in a nutshell. Now let's talk about the types of certifications we have out there. So we have a manager certification and we also have system owners. A manager certification is more or less where you have managers themselves. So let's say I'm a manager, I have people who report to me. Let's say at the end of the year, I have to look at all my reports and validate does John, Betty, Joe, should they still have their access today? And I review them one by one to say, hey, does this make sense? And that's really a typical one, and that's standard across the board. That's common, where you have system owners, where maybe you have people who own applications. A good example is you have a system owner who owns the application, and they're the ones that are doing the decision making. Same process from a manager perspective, who are the people who have access to my systems, and should they still have it? The common things I've seen in my career in terms of system owners doing reviews is a lot of times they'll I'm going to the manager saying, hey, this person still reports to you and should they still have access? And that could take some time. So not as common, but it does happen from time to time, more or less the certification that's being used or the campaigns are being used often versus system owners. But those are two tight ones. There's some other ones that I won't get too much detail on because we'll be here forever. But those are two common ones that I kind of want you to really understand or know about. Okay, so now let's talk about what's the goal? What are we trying to do for certifications? And I mentioned earlier, it's least privilege. I want to make sure that this person or persons has the right permission to do their job, nothing more, nothing less. And if they happen to have excessive, which is goal number two, we want to remove that. We don't want to keep that. And the reason is from a hacking or a breaching perspective is if for some bad reason, and it happens often that hackers will get somehow some bad credentials or somebody else get off board on, on the right time. and they might have excessive access. There could be good situations where they're attacked. They get access to their system and wow, this person has a lot more than, than we thought. Thank you. And hackers will just smile away saying, thank you so much for that excessive access. Where if we can limit that and say, oh, okay, if Joe only has this access. If they were to get breached or he was to get breached, for example, that identity, maybe we just limit the damage because we already know this Joe has access to X, Y, and Z. And that's pretty much it. The second goal is really to remove that. And compliance is the third goal. If you work for an industry that is, let's say, the health industry, which is HIPAA compliance, you might have some certain compliance laws you have to abide by. If you work for the financial industry, like a bank, for example, you have SOX that you have to really abide by. So the certifications is really used for compliance reasons. A lot of times organizations will not get this compliance or they don't have this baked into their system. If you don't have that baked into your security process or working with the GRC team, your governance risk and compliance team, you won't get that really compliance and you really can't do business. So 
Goals number one is again, to make sure, do they have the right access or at least privilege? Number two is if you want to remove excessive access just in case, because you just never know and it's better for least privilege. And the third one is compliance. Frequency. I talked about the different ways. So we have time-based. Time-based, very simple. You do it annually. You can do it quarterly. You can do it twice a year. You can do it monthly. It all depends. That's the most common method or frequency in terms of a certification campaign. Event-based campaigns is more when you have something that could happen. That usually happens when there's a breach. And I'm not saying it happens all the time, but there could be some campaign where somebody comes in and it's like, oh, man, hey, we just got breached all hands on deck and you do a certification just to narrow down and say who are the people that maybe have so much excessive access, we look at them first. And that's an easier way to do it versus just saying, I don't know, they have it. That's event-based. Another type of event-based that's not so bad is if you have a new manager that comes on board and they just inherit all these people, maybe that person wants to do a quick audit check on everything they have and get an understanding of what their users have. And that's common too. And ad hoc is just wherever you want to do it. Again, it's kind of similar to when you get a breach because you're doing ad hoc, but it's really just whenever. And it, it kind of goes the same line with the event base. So those are two common things right there in terms of where it could happen. But typically, time base is your more often or the most used frequency when it comes to certification. Hey, we'll do it on a certain time frame throughout the year. And in the next couple of slides, I'm talking about the pros and cons of using time base and really where I feel personally in my experience. Annual certifications just are not the thing to be. Challenges. Let's talk about challenges real quick. So I talked about why, in my opinion, annual certifications are not the good, good idea. Most of my customers are government employees, and a lot of them really like to just don't take a vacation during the year. And in, in terms of December or November, and December, they'll take off. And a lot of times, for whenever for agencies, they usually have a moratorium where, like, hey, Nothing, no changes happen during the month of December, maybe even January. And that's the reason why a lot of people are out because they, they really just, they hoard their vacation and use it at the end of the year. So why, why do I want to push their vacations during that time? If I have a manager who has to review employees and contractors, so from a government perspective, you're going to get to what we call rubber stamping. You can just go, you know what? Yep. Bang, 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 bang. And that's it. And you're not going to take away the time to really make sure, should this person really have access? And that's a problem. And that's where you just want this person to be in and out and they're done. The second challenge is unclear rights. And it kind of goes with the third one, which is name conventions suck. So to go hand in hand, a lot of times, most companies use Active Directory or AD to do their access. They'll get provision and they'll go put in certain carrier groups or whatever, and they'll be assigned these various roles or various entitlements. Some of them have the most like convoluted, crazy names because they don't want to change it. And only certain people know what that means. So as a manager, I'm looking, I'm like, I have no idea what this means. Could you get this like AES-6797575 jargon? You're like, I have no idea what this means. So now you guys take the time and go ask maybe the system owner saying, hey, what permission does this really mean? So for, as practitioners and you work with your BA from time to time is you work to kind of make these more business friendly. Maybe in the back end, you might have something that has all that jargon that maybe a developer might know or a system ad might know, but from a business perspective, we want to make sure that we can make it simple in terms of business friendly rights. And the name conventions that suck go the same way is you have these crazy name conventions that nobody knows. AES dash RES dash I admin dash AD, which is the worst because then if you get breached, like, oh, smack, I'm gonna go that, that, that one first. That, that's another way where those can have problems because sometimes, again, if a new manager, I have no idea what these name conventions mean, sure, done. And that could be bad. The last thing challenges is no set schedule. Most companies do, again, time and time, just their simple as, as annual, but there are times where you don't have one and that could be a problem because when times to do certifications, you'll have managers who don't know this and then you schedule it, a campaign for certifications and maybe they're out. What do you do? Do we have delegations? Is that something that, do we have escalations? All these things where you don't have set schedules, where if you can work in communicating that schedule, most managers and companies will know, oh, hey, it's certification time, cool. Let's, let's do it now so I make sure not to maybe take off that time. Or if I know I'm taking off, I can have a proper delegation to make sure that that certification campaign is done properly. And I don't really, in my experience, see a lot of no set schedule. Usually there is a set schedule, but I have seen some time and time where it's not consistent across the board where you want to be consistent.
other things to consider, I talked earlier about regulations. You want to make sure that as you certifications, you abide by whatever, if it's SOX, if it's HIPAA, any compliance that you have, certifications need to align with that. And I have worked with, with healthcare companies before where our certifications has to meet a certain criteria and it has to be a certain frequency and it has to be communicated properly or else they don't get HIPAA compliance or they might get dinged. And that's something as, if you work for an industry, again, if it's not government contracting, for example, like what, what I do, and it's something else, let's say you work for a media company or a fast food chain or a financial bank, you gotta make sure you understand the regulations. You make sure you work with those other cybersecurity teams, your IT, your SOX team, your GRC teams, whoever, to make sure that you understand what the compliance is, compliance team, and make sure that you get the right rules and then you abide by it and there isn't. You work with the policy team to make a policy, make sure that it's put in there. When it comes time for auditing for HIPAA, you meet the criteria. Let's put it all together. Certifications. A simple way for us to really look and validate accounts, access for the most part, can be done, can be redone any time, but preferably in my opinion, rather than doing it all one year, I suggest to organizations that you break it out into quarterly. So you'll do a certain chunk of people in the, in the beginning of the year, middle, and so all four quarters. So at the end of the year, you're not scrambling, you're given the right time to really make sure that you give the right eyes to all the rights and you say, yep, this makes sense. So you you hopefully eliminate rubber stamping. Your goal is to really enforce least privilege. Campaigns can be a challenge. You have to make sure you communicate properly, the set schedule, expectations, if there's rules, delegation, and everything within that realm, it's properly communicated and you have those rules in play because the worst thing you can happen is you have a person who, let's say in the middle of campaign, leaves the company. You have now this gap to be filled or this void. And then all of a sudden comes time to end. They're like, wait a minute, these eight or nine employees haven't got done yet. What do we do? And a lot of times you're the manager's manager. So the manager who left the company, he, he or she might have no idea what these th this is. And that's a bad thing. Communication, and that's why it can be a challenge, is you want to make sure that you really properly communicate. And that's the one biggest thing that I feel people forget in terms of the identity, cybersecurity, any tech is soft skills, it's communicating. I can sit here all day and just tell you all this stuff, but if I can communicate to, let's say, somebody who doesn't really understand all this stuff in a more simple fashion, you fail. So that's why campaigns can be a challenge because you want to make sure that you have managers that understand what you're trying to get to and you, and you break it down in a simple format that they get and nothing too overly technical or so much cybersecurity jargon that they're like, she has to wear a rubber stamp, which you don't want. And the last thing is really know your compliance laws. You want to make sure you understand all the different rules for that industry that you work for and you really abide by that and you work with the right teams for the most part from there. So that's certifications in a nutshell. It gives you a good background about really why we do it, the purpose of it. And if you go and work for your organization, you actually have some people, that's their specialty, that they do certifications because it's such an important process from there. You do have systems, there are certain IGA platforms like a cell point, for example, or others who has a built-in module that does it too. You really wanna get away from the spreadsheets and use these application systems to do it too. And that's something we'll talk about in future videos is kind of how you would do that or how you set it up and maybe other applications like Azure for example, Entra and maybe even Cellpoint for example. Even Okta, Okta has own certification module too. So just to show you how important that process is. Thank you so much for watching this video. Talked about certifications. Again, thank you for the 500 subscribers and plus I really am honored that you took the time to really subscribe to my channel and learn everything about identity. I have so much more cool stuff to come, even some more hands-on demonstrations, some projects that I wanna show you to, to really put on your resume. And of course, I wanna help you with job hunting, so I'll put some more videos on there too. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, my favorite term, stay curious because you never know. I'll see you soon. Bye.